Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel, right, and today we're gonna be talking a bit more about Odin. Now, I think vast majority of us universally can agree that Odin as a champion himself is, well, quite bad. That is not a great way to put it, many people are super annoyed. And uh, yeah, I agree the idea that not every champion has to be great, but Odin is really quite bad, in my opinion. It doesn't how much utility at all and his damage output is uh subpar at best and completely awful every other fight but there is a lot to talk about his synergies and about his pre-fight abilities and one of the kind of more dominant talk that has been going around the community recently has been the interaction with ghost when you have the full-on uh, Trinity with Wasp and Ant-Man, where you gain 15% uh, attack per buff, and if you bring in a couple of Odins, you can let her start with 6 buffs, and that lets her hit significantly harder. And it's fun, it's cool. And those type of videos are awesome and perfectly fine. Uh, I like making fun videos. I like finding fun interactions, and uh, it's a cool showcase of an interesting interaction, and there is 100% good reason to discuss it because it is interesting but at the same time there are a group of people who take what's presented in front of them and run wild with it there are a group of people who think this is the next hugest thing and it's going to change everything and this is going to be so major so huge and that often isn't the case sometimes it can be sometimes a new cool interaction can be borderline game breaking but uh, in this case, I want to approach this subject from a realistic, grounded standpoint and going over where it could and would not matter in realistic matter, how, when and why. So first of all, looking at this beautiful lady, who is in fact one of the best champions in the game, in my opinion. She's amazing. She already has a ton of utility and damage also has definitely never been GOAT's problem. Keep in mind that all of these pre-fight abilities offer pretty much no utility, or very little utility, uh, and just give her somewhat more damage. Effectively putting on some big boost or something, right? And that is another thing. People need to make a distinction between what is game-breaking. And having more damage on a champion that already has a lot of damage rarely is. It's fun, it's cool, it can be super helpful, it can to help accelerate a champion even further, but it also depends on how realistic, how feasible it is. For instance, if you dedicate a 5% synergy team to a thing, then thing is crazy, crazy potent and great, amazing attacker. However, you don't really see that happening too often especially toward the higher tiers of the game. Why? Because it's impractical, it's too risky, and there are often better solutions. For instance, when you use that 5% synergy team thing, uh, you leave yourself vulnerable to any errors. And if you make one mistake and you, let's say, die using thing, then you're going to automatically be forced to use a revive. Now, in most scenarios, I'd rather bring in five champions, and if one dies, I'm just going to carry on using next champion. And if that dies, I'm going to carry on using that champion, and that typically lets me get through content uh, itemless, especially recently, or at the very least with less amount of items. So there are in eight huge, huge disadvantages in over synergizing your champions and these whole dream teams and the perfect teams that let the champion excel are great for video showcases. They are great to have fun, but they're not overly practical. And to kind of like prove that point, best of my ability right now i'm going to be trying to go through entire game and we're going to be trying to figure out where this ghost trinity with two odins or even a single odin would come in handy and uh, where it would be useful and where it would not be useful so we're going to start with special quests so yes you can do it in realm of legends because in realm of legends you can do pretty much whatever you want now the problem with the realm of legends is that the content is so dated that it literally doesn't matter Ghost, even with this setup, will still not be a better Realm of Legends clearer, I think, than Colossus or Cosmic Gosh, for example. But she would be up there, she would be good for potion farming. But again, that really, really doesn't care. Because if you are somebody who has a high-level Ghost and who can actually do all the setup, has two copies of Odin, you're definitely not somebody who is going to be struggling with Realm of Legends. Now, let's move on to Labyrinth of Legends. 
And yes, it is perfectly possible to synergize up Ghost to this degree in Labyrinth of Legends, and you would have better time clearing Labyrinth with Ghost. However, again, if you have the ability to get all of these pieces together, I have very big suspicion that you probably either have cleared Labyrinth already or have very little wish to do so. In addition to that, you can synergize Ghost as much as you want. Unfortunate truth of the matter is that she still isn't going to be better in Labyrinth than Aegon or Colossus, who is just an absolute tank. Yes, you're going to have better time, you're going to deal more damage, but it's not going to be that much more damage. You're not going to be doing better or at the very least more consistent labyrinth clears using ghost than a gun or colossus or possibly even like apocalypse fully set up or professor x but it can be helpful in labyrinth so there's that so we're gonna give point to this setup there abyss of legends it's immediately out of the question because you can't even bring in a three people ghost synergy team let alone five people because you need to have access to mystic characters you need to have access to many different pieces of utility in order to deal with a lot of different encounters. Therefore, unfortunately, you will not be able to use this team setup and take advantage of this game-breaking new buff to Ghost in Abyss of Legends. Right, let's move on to the next one. Let's go through the variant. So variant one, you can't use it because you can only bring two class of uh, champions and you can only bring tech champions together with mystic champions. So variant one is out of the window. Variant 2 is intended for large or XLR champions, or you can use champions who heavily rely on their heavy attack. Therefore, Variant 2 is also not going to be a place where you use this setup. Variant 3 is tech variant, and definitely any path that you can use Ghost and only Ghost for, you can use, and this can be helpful. Variant 3 is a place that could potentially become easier if you have access to double Odin this Ghost setup. So Variant 3... Fair point, you're not going to be used for every single path, because there are paths that Ghost can't do, but it's going to be a decently good help if Ghost is the way you want to go. I personally still would probably bring in five good tech champions over Ghost and a full synergy set, but that's me. But it can be used and could potentially be helpful. Now, variant four, no dice, because, uh, well... You need to switch in between stars, therefore most you can access is one Odin, therefore double Odin setup doesn't work to begin with. Second of all, you kind of like just shoot up and down to the star levels, and once you go to the lower star levels and the harder maps, you don't actually have the ghost synergies, I believe, but even if you do, it's just not a type of variant where that would matter much. Variant 5, ghost is not a symbiote, spider, or... A mystic character therefore you can't use this setup and variant 6 you can do it because in variant 6 you can actually bring in non villains you just can't use them but if you use this setup you literally go in the quest with one champion if anything goes wrong you end up using ton of items therefore i also believe that this would be one of the less practical plays but you can kind of get away with it in some lanes in some path but overall variant 6 is definitely designed much more about uh, the unblockables and unstoppables and uh, stuff like that where you want to have access to armor breaks and different pieces of utility so there will potentially be lanes in variant 6 where you can use this but it's not going to make that much impact and i don't see a practical reason to do so so doesn't make any meaningful impact on special quests doesn't make any meaningful impact on the variants. So let's go to other game modes. So in AQ, you can't do that because you only have three champion slots, right? And uh, you can't you can't benefit from this setup. So it's not going to drastically improve your ghost's playability in Alliance Quest. Now in Alliance War, you technically can get it set up and there are potential places where it could or would be useful. Maybe if two or one person brings in Odin and when there is some sort of joint fight they place the pre-fights and some person brings in a ghost theme but most typically you still in alliance war rely much more on the hood synergy which you cannot bring in if you need an ant-man and i just don't really see this being used often i can definitely see a scenario where it could work and it potentially will be showcased in some YouTube video over the season, but it's not like it's going to be new groundbreaking tactic that's going to make your team win Alliance Wars. It will be useful, potentially, 
infrequently but i doubt it and incursions is kind of similar thing it could potentially have an impact on incursions where you use these pre-fight abilities initially swap in and out odins to give these pre-fights to ghost and then in like room three you bring in ant-man and how this full thing kind of set up that would require quite a lot of setup and it could potentially be a legitimate strategy. Now, would it be better than focusing on other champions and having three champions that do the fighting instead of bringing Ant-Man and Wasp alongside your Ghost in incursions? Again, I personally think most like better option is to bring in three champions you can actually use than bring in one champion and rely on pre-fights and synergies, but Fair is fair, and it could potentially have some impact uses in incursions, but I don't think it will be overly meaningful or overly popular strategy. And uh, then let's jump to the places where it is likely to work. Now, it is going to work in some path and some quests in Act 6 and Act 7, but there's going to be a ton of places where it doesn't work. It's not going to work on any path where Ghost is unable to take the boss, and there are several of them where Ghost is quite. A bad option for the boss it also will not work on any lane or path where you have gates 6.2 has a ton of gates so it's not going to work against any gate path and 6.3 also has a lot of very restrictive path with like safeguard with rage and a bunch of other nodes like that so it will work in some places here and there in act 6 and 7 but again i don't think that will be the best strategy to go with over bringing in more champions that can actually deal with problems and when you do make a mistake uh, then you don't have to automatically revive you can just carry on with different champion but there are fair, fair is fair and there will be potential use for act 6 and act 7 and some of the lanes to make them slightly easier if you go all in on the ghost and as I already discussed previously, some paths in variant 3 and 6, this could be used, and possibly rare case in AWN incursions. Now, to best of my ability, I can only find one place in this game that it will likely make any impact at all. Just because it works, it doesn't mean that it's going to be the best strategy, or doesn't mean it is going to be the recommended play. Just because you can do a fight with Iron Patriot, it doesn't mean that it's the best counter, for example. And putting everything on top aside, there is only one place and one place only in this game that I can actually think if this synergy, well, pre-fight setup and the synergy team is left untouched and actually enters the game as it currently is, the only place where it could matter is, I believe, Act 7 Legends runs, because in Act 7, I do think you can swap out champions before the boss fight if you need additional counter. And most importantly, in Act 7, none of the planning time and switching in and out time and changing your teams actually matter. It's only the fighting time that matters. And doing fights as fast as possible is kind of like the name of the game for Act 7 Legends runs right now. And uh, again, for a champion that has a great amount of utility and already has a great amount of damage, in context of a legends run giving even more damage is can be and most likely will be useful so for people who are thinking and are planning about running legends run and have access to ghost at a high level this could be helpful those are the people that i think should be excited but if you're not somebody who's planning to run acts on legends run again i don't think it will make any significant impact at all if ever. Now, obviously, there are other aspects of Odin, and right now I am specifically talking about the synergy setup with Ghost. And I want to reiterate that that fun showcases are fun showcases. I like uploading fun showcases, but at the same time, I believe that uh, I'm not going to say it's my duty, but I would at the very least like to make as many people as I possibly can aware there's a huge difference from showcasing something fun which is perfectly fine and showcasing something that's helpful faster that's going to be super useful which is a completely different thing and this ain't that this ain't that for 99.9 percent .9 of the player base 
This setup with Ghost will have very, very, very little impact on any game mode that matters. And I want to make sure that people understand that. Having fun in this game is awesome. Having more damage on champions is fun. Great. I like making fun videos. I like doing fun fights. But it has to be said incredibly clear that having fun and having the, the most fun option or the most fun time is not necessarily what you want and what you need and what will help you to progress in the game. So it's up to you to decide how important it is for you to give a little bit or decent amount of extra damage to a champion who already has more than enough damage. But in exchange, you sacrifice a lot. Sacrifice all of your team slots, you sacrifice everything else. So there we go. And uh, again, not to be a downer, I definitely think that once I personally get my hands on Odin, I'll obviously try and have a bit of fun with it as well. But again, to make it perfectly clear, I do not think that outside of Act 7 Legends run, this right now has any impact on anything important or meaningful in this game. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am overlooking something. Maybe there will be new interactions that come to play. You never know. But right now, I just don't see much value past this one line about Act 7 Legends run. That is it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And uh, yeah, that is it for now. And I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, we have all the information about.